Thanksgiving has finally arrived. The movie, not the holiday. And I've been seeing this movie trailer being played in the cinema for months, so it did its job and it got my seat filled in the theater. With it seeming like a new slasher franchise could be on the way after this first installment and it having an ending that you kind of expect with these types of movies, let's recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from it. So let's get into it. Here is Thanksgiving Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. So first off, I genuinely had a nightmare with this movie. I booked my ticket for 11.45, turned up to the theater, and was told that I'd booked it for 12 hours later, and I didn't even realize when I'd done that. But luckily enough, there was a viewing at 11.30, and they switched my tickets over to that showtime. So I made it just in time after the trailers. Then, during the movie, right at the end, I spilled my coffee all on the chair and walked out looking like a fool with Swamp Pass. So even though the experience of watching this movie wasn't the best, purely because of myself, it hasn't clouded my judgement of what I went on to see. So, here we go. The Ending Explained This whole movie was focused around Thanksgiving, and how consumerism and Black Friday has kind of taken over the celebration of Thanksgiving. With signs such as Thanksgiving, not thanks buying, and scenes such as the opening section, which reminded me of those viral videos that you'd see online in 2015 of people going absolutely mental over the stores that would slash their prices. This was something which was highlighted in the movie, and the main reason as to why the whole plot of the movie was actually occurring. However, in this feature, it wasn't only the prices that were getting slashed, if you know what I mean. Stemming all the way back to the year before on Thanksgiving, we saw that Mitch was a manager of a Walmart-inspired store which was owned by an individual called Thomas Wright, somebody who was enjoying Thanksgiving inside his mansion with his family. But he made his workers open the store on that day in order to make more profits for the company and line his own pockets. With the blinded by greed attitude that people had over Black Friday, we saw scenes of the store being utterly obliterated, and it led to several people dying inside of the store due to people caring more for the deals instead of the lives of others. Due to Thomas's daughter going into the store earlier than everybody else with her friends and taunting the people that were outside, and with Evan recording a video that got uploaded online of the tragic events, it meant that they were on the list for the serial killer who hid behind a John Carver mask. Just in case you didn't know, John Carver was one of the pilgrims who was on the Mayflower voyage, which led to the creation of the Plymouth Colony in the United States, hence why the movie was set in Plymouth. As we got to the end of the movie, many individuals were getting picked off, such as the security guard who ran away in the opening scene, the civilian who had no regard for human life, Yulia, Kathleen, and many more. We saw that on the Thanksgiving parade, John Carver kidnapped the rest of them and had them sit around his dinner table for Thanksgiving. During this scene, we saw that he bludgeoned Evan's head on the table whilst giving some witty lines about going viral and hitting the audience on the head with what they needed. And with Carver looking to go round the table and take out everybody that was seated, the ring that Jessica was given actually acted as a blade, so she was able to get her hands out of the pieces of rope that were tied around it, and she handed it over to Scuba, who was also able to do the same thing. This led to her being able to flee after managing to get over the fence and running from Carver. After this, Jessica made it back to the town and saw Sheriff Newland lying on the floor, and as she looked over at the warehouse, she took his weapon and entered. Once she was in there, she saw Bobby, her former love interest, leaving, which made her believe that he was John Carver, the serial killer. But before she could do anything, the sheriff came in behind her and said that he'd go after her. With it seeming like Bobby was confirmed to be the killer, the other authorities were called in to deal with the matter. Shortly afterwards, as Sheriff Newland was about to take Jessica away with her, she noticed his boots and the greenery that was on it. Tying back to something he said earlier about noticing the smallest mistakes and not being able to trust anybody. The greenery that was on his boots was from the forest that she had to run through to escape, and she put two and two together and came to the realization that it was him who was the killer. When it came to revealing why he did it, he revealed how on that fateful night one year ago, the opening scene, somebody who he cared about, Amanda, was killed in the massacre that took place from the shoppers. The sheriff was having an affair with Mitch's wife, Amanda. She was pregnant with his child and she was planning on leaving Mitch. They were going to start a new life together and have a family. However, on that night, it was all taken away from him by the shoppers and the group of school kids. And he believed that it wouldn't have happened if the group that were in there to start with hadn't been taunting everybody out the front, causing the crowd to get riled up and aggravated. 
This made sense as to why he killed the woman who worked in the diner, as she was the one who rammed her trolley into Amanda. The security guard because he ran away and didn't do his job. The young couple as they were getting the crowd to turn into a riot. And then he planned to kill the rest of the group for taunting them. And also Thomas Wright for being negligent in the setting up of the Black Friday event. With Jessica capturing his confession on a live stream with Bobby's phone that was confiscated by the authorities as evidence, we saw that herself and Bobby tried to escape before he could kill them. And they did manage to do so. This was because she fired a musket, the only weapon that she'd ever fired and it caused the canister to explode, and us to believe that John Carver was killed in the fire, with the officers saying that nothing would have survived the blaze. But in true horror slasher style, we know that that's not the case, and I think it definitely sets up a sequel. There was no post credit scene in this movie, which was a shame, as maybe the dragging of an axe or something like that would have been a nice addition to confirm that a sequel could have been in the works. But I feel we could see a second movie for sure. Overall review. I thought this movie was pretty good, for what it was anyway. You could tell it was Eli Roth at the wheel just due to the sheer amount of blood, guts, quite literally, and gore that was shown to us. It was very reminiscent of the Hostel movies, some of the first movies that got me into this genre when I was a teenager, and come to think of it, the story was probably as fleshed out as the Hostel movies. It wasn't too deep, but there was enough there to be satisfied. You're not here for Hitchcock, you're just here for the blood and interesting deaths. To be fair, some of the deaths rival that of Saw X, and I'd say were even more brutal, something which I think is quite hard to do. The woman being cut in half, the neck turn, the trampoline, all of them were so creative and quite hard to watch at points. The performances in this movie were nothing to write home about, but they were pretty decent. All of the students were on the same level and I don't think any of them shone massively. They were there to essentially be the shells of people that got killed, so yeah. Patrick Dempsey was pretty good and delivered what you'd expect from him, and Rick Hoffman was decent too. They were probably the two strongest performers, but that's no surprise as they were the most seasoned actors that were there on set. John Carver as a villain is one that could go on to be iconic in years to come, and it does have the foundations there, but I don't think he's as menacing in terms of appearance as he could possibly be. You look at Jason and Freddy and they're the epitome of something you'd hate to see in your nightmares, or whilst alone in a dark room. John Carver, it's just a guy with a cheap mask. If the image were to be improved in the future, maybe incorporating the fact that he's been burned, that would work perfectly. I think this movie served its purpose well, and I think word of mouth will probably do it justice, because I think it's better than what an initial assumption is. The opening section in itself climaxing with the gun being fired into the air with the movie title appearing and fading out was pretty cool, and it was kind of a homage to original slasher movies. Over on Letterboxd, I gave this movie a 3 star out of 5, which is pretty good for the type of movie that it is. So if you've not watched it yet, I'd recommend it, because it is enjoyable. So, there you have it, Thanksgiving Ending Explained. If you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this movie? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.